getting verified. So I'm gonna teach you step-by-step step how I did it. He also gave me a contact. It's all about the contact. This contact, you pay money. Make sure you have some press. Make sure you have some events. Make sure when people Google you, they find you. A real thing. Ah! Ah! Yo. <laughs> Come, 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 come here, come here. Let, let, let me show you to my show friends. <laughs> Wait until my dog eats you when you do that. Hey, guys, so this is our friend Roman. <laughs> this is our. What's up, man? We're recording. Yeah. So how do our friends? You're not recording right now, are yeah, you? No, it's recording. live. Oh, hey, what's <laughs> up, kids? Who is Roman, and, and how did you get into all these crazy homes in Bel Air, Beverly Hills? Well, believe it or not, uh, <clears throat> I started out building swimming pools. Number one, you got to believe in yourself that you can do it. But right? I think a lot of guys stay plateaued because you know maybe they look at big homes and it's overwhelming and you know it's one of those things that if you you try hard enough and that's what you want to do and you put in the work and and you, you do your homework and you learn how to do it well sky's yeah. the limit and everybody has challenges but in the end it's you know my philosophy is i don't care what you do you got to love what you do always focusing on helping people you think that's why you keep getting more and more successful in business I don't know. I mean, I think that everybody owes everybody, you know, respect and yeah. kindness, and that's just the way I roll. Hey guys, welcome to Driven Couples, and this episode is going to be like a preview of Driven Chilla. So very excited about it. And you know how I am. I just spill all the beans. So yeah, did does. I pay for my verification? Yes, partly. And uh, Did I'm it gonna, work? No. Did it work? Yes, it did. Obviously, I'm verified. <laughs> not only on Instagram, not but I'm also verified on Facebook. <laughs> well, people could pay for it, but it doesn't mean it's going to work. If Pancho Villa pays, he's not going to get verified. I get it. Or maybe he will because Pancho Villa is kind of famous, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But however, before we get started, guys, I'm going to teach you all every single step that I did based on my experience. So based on my experience, I got verified. Still can't say how she got verified because she's not verified. <laughs> I'm yet. not verified. So, and I'm OK with that. <laughs> so I'll explain step by step what I did and what you have to do. And um, before we get started, Seal asked me which tile do you want to use? And she said she showed me a white whitish grayish like beautiful tile and when i come home she's like oh you're gonna be so happy the tile's getting already installed and your pool's gonna be ready by friday and i come <laughs> home and the tile's like green it's not green it's turquoise it looks- well i took a vote in the office and everybody said that this color is a lot easier to maintain and okay i messed up you tell me not to ask you things so don't complain yeah but it's like if like it would have been better Pink. Ste- blame Steph. She voted for this color. Like I, I would have preferred. <laughs> I would have. Yeah, but we don't need to worry about maintaining. Like we just want to have. I mean, she literally took our. She she she, she literally took our our tile that was green, to put another green one. But it was an ugly shape. Yeah. Anyway, so guys, we're gonna have a poll soon. Keep going. Yeah, so guys, I'm going to welcome all of you to ask me questions. Uh, I mean, so you could, they could ask still questions about other things, but you could ask me questions about getting verified. So I'm going to teach you step-by-step step how I did it. I can go in detail, which I will at the Driven Cella, Driven 4, but I'm going to give you like the basics. Okay, so number one, when you get ver- the the number one thing, I go back to collaborations and buying your circle of influence. Dan Fleischman and Ty Lopez. They were key in me getting verified. Ty Lopez, Dan Fleischman. So before I met, before I met Ty, I met Brad Lee and Brad hooked me up with Ty. And then I got with Ty and then Ty started showing me like, this is what you do, this is what you do. Here's my contact. And then Dan Fleischman, obviously he's a king of marketing. Remember when Dan Fleischman went to our house? Yeah, he's amazing. And, and he, was, he, gave me, he gave me a bunch of tips on what I need to do. And he also gave me a contact. It's all about the contact. This contact, you pay money. It doesn't always work. So the fee is 3000 bucks. Okay, not a lot. If somebody's charging you 10000 to get verified, it's baloney. If somebody's charging you money up front, it's baloney. So three grand... Is a good number. 
and they don't they don't collect that payment until you're verified. Now, don't go celebrate and go like, I got three grand. I'm gonna I'm gonna get verified. It's not that easy, still. So, before you do that, make sure you have some press. Make sure you have some events. Make sure when people Google you, they find you. Make sure, in other words, that you run real businesses and are successful and you could see it, okay? And, and you don't have to be a celebrity like a Kim Kardashian or a Justin Bieber. You could be a normal person like me and get verified. And this is what's so cool, Sil, mm -hmm. about... Pay attention. Um, I am. I this is what's so it. cool about... Instagram and Facebook, right guys? So Instagram, social media made it, social media is like an equalizer. So social media puts somebody like, like still that's uh, checking out the pool of progress. I'm making sure I like the tile because maybe I think I don't like it either, but I don't want to agree well, with you. You, you, I'm always, you always tell me you're right, Albert, you were right, so. The white one was my favorite, but everybody told me it was really hard to, I've never had my own pool. Yeah, so. and you listen uh, to someone that told you that a lot of people, way, it was yeah, like a lot of people, but our problem is not clean it because you're not going to clean it. Right. You have a <laughs> no, bunch of assistants that could clean it, including in the house. So stop worrying okay, about okay. cleaning. It's like, uh, Oh, I have to well, clean we'll my, when the I have to clean, on. I have to clean uh, like my cars. Like you have people that clean it. The little accident that you caused in the suburban, yeah. it's already fixed. Did oh, you notice it? that? Yeah. Who fixed it? They just wiped it. It was just dirt. No, no. You it's took completely, out, no. It's completely gone. You took out that pole. But sorry, guys. It, it's, it's completely just, gone. We have so many things yeah. going so, on. So, so you going. keep inter interrupting. I'm so and, sorry. And you don't stay focused. So stay focused. People are watching. They're going to ask some questions. And, I love you guys. And you don't want people to ask questions and you're looking at yes, the Yes, okay, back. keep going. So social media is the equalizer for somebody like Sylvia to compete with somebody like Kim Kardashian. So Kim Kardashian is famous, right? Yeah. She's really famous. <laughs> yeah. But you could compete with her because you could become famous on social media. You mm -hmm. could become verified and then you become a celebrity. Yeah. So you don't have to be a basketball player and from the NBA. You don't have to be Michael Jackson. Somebody that's not even a celebrity could become a celebrity now through social media and make a lot more money. Kim Kardashian is actually an example of that. Kim Kardashian is not a movie star, a porn star, right? That's a, that's a, because she comes out and like, if you look up porn stars, Kim Kardashian is like number one, <laughs> number two, but, but she did her own video, but she's not like a movie star or like a professional athlete, yeah. but she became a celebrity through social media, through, yes. through that video that yes. she did with Ray J, right? I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know, but yeah. Yeah. I and mean, also it helps that she's good looking. She's pretty. Yeah. But there's a lot of girls that look like Kim Kardashian now, a lot. Yeah. Like I, every every day I see like 10 Kim Kardashians. Yeah. <laughs> and, and some of them are actually prettier. <laughs> You're so stupid. But go, going back, like for example, Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. He's like a badass star, high pay, highest paid athlete, or at least top three. But somebody like Kim Kardashian is more famous than Cristiano Ronaldo. How could that be? How, come, how can somebody that came from nothing, I mean, they both came from nothing, but somebody that wasn't a celebrity, became a celebrity and now with Cristiano Ronaldo. So now Kim could put out a product and sell a lot of, my, a lot of, pro, a lot of units and make a lot of money. But my point is that you, you get the point, right? Somebody that's not even supposed to be famous could become famous through social media. Yeah. So which is something that uh, Mo Mohammed is doing, Alpha Slice. Mm -hmm. He's driving his Lambo and he's driving his, his Ferrari and then he's posting in the morning, choices, bitch. Look at my choices. And then people that drive Hondas and, and, and Toyotas are like, man, this fucker. How do I do that? And, and, yeah. so, and, and then people see him and they're like, what does this guy do? So he becomes instant celebrity. Like he's going to be verified. Like I give it six more months, he'll be verified. Because mm -hmm. it takes time. You have to be patient. But it's a very cool thing to do. And so many things come after you get verified. Like if you think about it, I've been verified for what, eight months, I think? The last eight months, no, I made, I like made the most year. money. No, not a year. Not a I, year. It just gives you more credibility, I would say. You made so much money. Context. But add, add, to, add to it, and then I'll keep telling people. Yeah, so we tried for a while, and he had different interviews and podcasts because there has to be credibility behind it, obviously. It can't just be anybody. But I feel like you just kept trying and trying and trying. He was very, very persistent. And obviously, our businesses are real. They're... Yo, 
Come, 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 come here, come here. Let, let, let me show you to shit my friends. <laughs> Wait until my dog eats you when you do that. Hey, guys, so this is our friend Roman. <laughs> this What's is up, our. What's up, man? We're recording. Yeah. So how do our friends? You're not recording right now, are yeah, you? I'm no, it's recording. live. Oh, hey, what's up, kids? <laughs> hey, hey, hey Roman, R Roman built one of the most, like many of the most beautiful homes. Yeah. Yeah. So, my friend Roman right here. So, I didn't um, realize you guys were filming. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, okay. you, you, got, you, you came at a good time. I, I thought you were going to come. I was about to, to ask you, you want to come by? And, yeah, then, and then you, you showed up. Yeah, I was just wanting to see how the work was going. It looks nice. What do people need that? So we, she told me, <laughs> like, I, she showed me the, these beautiful tiles, like grayish. It almost, look, it almost looked like carbon fiber, like mixed with diamonds. And then I come back and it's like greenish. <laughs> And I'm like, what the Tell hell? Tell them it's going to look nice with the water, please. What do you no, think? What? With the white water, it's very Beverly Hills, very chic. So, the, so, she, so, chic. so you approve it? I do. Oh, perfect. So, approved. So, now he likes it. <laughs> now I like it. Mm. Cool. Well, yeah. there we are. Awesome. Well, nice, nice for uh, coming by. Did you get a new refrigerator? Yeah, yeah check it out. It. It's in the kitchen. Donde la corona? <laughs> so, so, it's yeah, guys. coming along. Do you like it? Remember, as, as a little boy, I always wanted a sub-zero fridge when my dad kept telling me. <laughs> yeah, if you guys don't know Roman, he could sneak into any house. Yeah, he really could. Yeah, he, he knows how to do it really good. His houses. So I'll tell you guys a funny story if I could just add it real quick to this. So we're here and he's like, oh, we could do this and this because he's like, he, he builds the most beautiful houses ever. So he takes me to like a badass house and I'm like, what the fuck? Like it makes this house i was just like what like what is this like really it was horrible timing because after that house i just want hey, one of hey, his designs hey roman remember when we showed you this house and then you took us to your house and we we got all <laughs> depressed and we were like crying almost after <laughs> that's okay man it's good to have you know inspiration yeah it is it's amazing they came to cut you saw the view but they went home roman because there was a heat wave i'm like okay <laughs> So they'll be back Friday. <laughs> so if they do it, if they're doing plaster, they'll start putting water Friday night. By Saturday, we'll put the chemicals and you can swim by it for a week. Are you sure? Yeah. Perfect. So, so yeah, that's good. Nice. Go. Awesome. Okay, keep going. Yeah, guys. So you want you want to uh, mute it, Steph? But but yeah, you were talking about the perseverance. Just keep you know keep going, keep trying. Again, I always say this, and I tell all my salespeople and my beautiful people that i have in the company just keep gr grinding keep trying keep going like don't stop because it's going to take a year don't stop because it's going to take two years don't stop because it's going to take six months don't put it aside because then it just never gets done and your life passes you by and you never did anything yeah so you do that very well he just keeps going and going and going i think that's one of both of our qualities that we just go until we get it done no matter how long it takes but yeah keep going yeah so one of the Things that you'll see on Instagram is there's a section right there where you could click and ask Instagram to verify you. So that does not work. <laughs> that does, you could try it on and on and on multiple times and it's not going to work. OK, it's not going to work. Just trust me on that. So what you have to do is a lot a lot of the uh, I'll tell you, over you there if you want to go say I'll hi. tell you a few things that that work really good. OK, like when you are when you're verified your DMs, like if you DM somebody it appears on the top. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say if I DM uh, Kim Kardashian and, and I'm like trying to hook up with her, <laughs> if I have a, when she sees, she's my message, first of all, is gonna be on, on the top. And then she's gonna see a blue check mark. So she's gonna see it. She's gonna see a blue check mark and she's gonna be like, hmm, she'll consider it. But if you send her a DM and you're not verified, she won't even see it. Not, 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 it's not even gonna be at, at the top. You won't even see it. So that's why it's very important to do that. When you comment on somebody, it appears on the top, and and there's a lot of a lot of things that are that are that are really important. Also, like if you go on the search, mm -hmm. and you want to search, like you put let's say you put Sylvia, mm -hmm. you know who's gonna come up? The verified. Not Sylvia. you, the verified Sylvia, yeah, because yeah. that's the real Sylvia. But if they search Albert, the real Albert's gonna come come out. So <laughs> Albert's gonna come out. <laughs> I'm sure they come in a line. But. And and it also gives you credibility with other other celebrities. So when celebrities see you, they're like, oh, this guy is verified. She's verified. And it's a lot of credibility. 
Also for me, that's why I say that in the last eight months when I got verified, we just, we just blew up. Like we just made more money than ever because it also allowed us to recruit more people. More people saw us serious. Like a lot of our, our, our people, when they go out and they're like in lunches and things like that, they tell them, wow, you're part of TMG? <laughs> yeah, you know Albert's Albert? verified, Albert's verified. So it's a big deal to people and it is a pretty big deal. I'll tell you, I'll give you another example. PHP, my friend Patrick, he's verified. He was the only one verified mm -hmm. from the whole company. Only one verified. A lot of people drive Lambos and they drive like exotic cars, but nobody's verified. They're very only successful. Only Patrick. Mm -hmm. And the first one to get verified was Erica, mm -hmm. right? Erica Del Toro. So she became verified. Also, like it's just there's so many pluses when you're verified and it takes a lot of work. So this is the first step you have to do. And we're going to we're going to get some questions. So if you guys have some questions, post your question below. Uh, let us know, Steph, when we have um, uh, the first question, we're going to start answering questions like in the next uh, 10 minutes. So when when you're verified. It makes everything so, so, so better. But I was saying something. I, I lost my thought. So help me out. The your name pops up to the top. The what was he saying? His oh, when you're when you're gonna apply for for the verification, number one step is you have you need press. You need oh. press. So you have to hire a publicist, which is also gonna cost you money. So, for example, there's a lot of publicists that you could hire for ten thousand dollars. So you pay them ten thousand dollars, and they put a bunch of articles out for you. So you. They interview you and then they put those articles in magazines. That's why you see a lot of people that are not really accomplished and they have articles. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. I mean, have you guys ever seen that? I have. Like there's some people that like there's like little kids, nothing wrong with little kids, uh, but young people that are really not accomplished at all. And then they have all these articles that from the Inc. Inc. magazine, from uh, Forbes magazine and from all these places. And you're like, what the hell? They haven't even accomplished that. But they're working on their verification. Yeah. So like, for example, Mohammed, uh, you need to get a publicist so that they start post writing articles for you because you have a real story. And you could be like, yeah, you know, I, I was the, I'm, I'm the top paid nurse in the world. And that's why I drive a Lambo and a Ferrari. So I, and, and then you write your story where you came from, all that. You'll get verified and like he'll be verified probably at Driven. Yeah. If you keep going at the pace you're going, I, I do not doubt it. Also, before applying, besides the press, you got to get your followers up. So if right now you have 3,000 followers, 4,000 followers, mm. it's not enough. You got to get your follower count up to at least, I would say, 10,000. Okay, you, you get the swipe ups and it's going to be more credible. So work on your follower counts. Collaboration is a huge thing. Like if you, don't, if you know any influencers, collaborate with them post with them and be on their good side because if you're not on their good side what's going to happen with with not being on their good I side I know they stop flowing power to you Yeah what what happens when you burn your bridge you yeah, you can't come back it's burned it's over you know and, and 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 as I always tell Albert relationships are more important than money that's that's a fact and money's you, to be You want to jump on their on their on their uh, show really quick Pardon? You want to jump on it really quick on your show? Yeah. All right, let's do it, man. What are we talking about? You, you sit here with him. <laughs> you can sit. You can. You can sit, sit right here. I can go hug my my baby. All right. Yeah. Oh. All right. Hey guys, so What's so up, we're, kids? We're, how are you guys doing? We're gonna give you a special bonus here. We're here with Roman, so comment, post some questions. But but Roman, uh, now that you're here, it's a, such a blessing. But I want to ask you a question for people that don't know you. Sure. Like. Who is Roman and, and how did you get into all these crazy homes in Bel Air, Beverly Hills? Well, believe it or not, uh, <clears throat> I started out building swimming pools. That was my first thing. My father owned a swimming pool company and uh, I started working for him when I was 15, 16 years old. When I wanted a car, I started digging ditches for the plumbers. So within these swimming pools, there's a lot of plumbing. Yeah. So that's how I started. I started plumbing. I started pulling permits. I went to design courses for swimming pools. And then I got my swimming pool license when I was 24 years old. So I started out doing swimming pools, but lucky enough in LA, a lot of the swimming pools came with room additions, kitchenettes, bathrooms, big barbecues, outdoor kitchens. So as you do a pool, maybe you'll do a little remodel, maybe you do a room addition. And it just grew into my first really a uh, big house when I was 33 years old. 
And now I'm an old man. I'm 56. So no, but you look you look young, man. But <laughs> but when you were 33 years old, what, how much was that big house or the, your big project? Uh, the first one I ever did was 35 million dollars wow. cost of construction. So and, and and I know was that no money that you used other people's money or oh you? absolutely yeah that so was... be, so before we we get into that though when you you were like one of these guys building pools right right like and, absolutely and, and as my... a matter of fact the guys that are doing your tile work yeah. right now work for me directly and they've been with me since 1997. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. For those, for those of you that don't know, like I, I was with him on his boat, nice, beautiful boat, <laughs> beautiful boat. But my dad, I remember seeing him with a lot of um, with a lot of uh, workers like that remodel things, con uh, contractors. Yeah. But they never make it like they, they always they always stay as contractors just doing like jobs and they don't make a lot, a lot of money. They don't get right. to that next level. Like what, what do you think was the biggest difference that you went from like just being a typical contractor to getting a $30 million project? Well, I mean, it's just one of those, number one, you got to believe in yourself that you can do it, right? I think a lot of guys stay plateaued because, you know, maybe they look at big homes and it's overwhelming. And, you know, if it's one of those things that if you, you try hard enough and that's what you want to do and you put in the work and, and you, you do your homework and you learn how to do it well, sky's yeah. the limit. Yeah. So I don't want to give too much information about Roman because you're going to be at, at the CEO uh, session at Driven. That's but right. We're going to come in. We're going to give you guys some uh, some incredible uh, some incredible uh, life lessons. Can, that can you give some? Can you give them a sneak peek of how you uh, maybe a little teaser, not too much mm -hmm. info, but how do you how do you build a big million dollar home with no money? Uh, you know, it's a secret, and it's actually a secret that I'm going to come and give you guys in Driven that very few people know how to do. <laughs> And there's a system of doing it. And, uh, you know, in, in 2012, I started doing homes that were 20, 30 million dollars that I was making millions of dollars building them. And I was making millions of dollars when they sold. And the only thing I brought to uh, to the table was uh, design experience and kind of putting the puzzle pieces together and making everybody that was involved that had the money have it make sense that they would want to spend and invest in me and i'm going to tell you guys exactly how to do that hey guys so you guys on instagram mm -hmm. we're going to cut it off mm -hmm. and text mm -hmm. that number if you want to we'll keep watching it mm -hmm. we're going to continue here uh roman how long was when you started the, with the pools till you were 33 and built that 30 million dollar home well i mean i got my first pool license you know i was working for my dad before but i started working on my own when i was about 24 years old yeah and the first really big house that I did, I was 33. So about nine years. Nine years. Yeah. And, and then when you got that house, did you start getting a lot of other houses back to back to back? I did. You know, I got really lucky because that was in the middle of the tech boom. And I got a project for a, uh, uh, a guy who had just become a new billionaire. His company went public. It was a big tech company. Uh, and he, I just happened to be doing some work on the guy's street for another client and doing a pool. And, uh, his wife actually approached me and asked, hey, would you like to you know, take a shot at maybe doing uh, our house? We're, we're going to do a big house. But the husband really didn't want to use me because he yeah. said, well, what has this guy done? And I hadn't done anything at that time in that, in that size or anything. So uh, the husband interviewed me and said, well, I kind of like some of your design ideas. So I made him a deal. And this is how I got my first job. He, was, he had another big architectural firm for New York. So they were paying them a lot of money to design their home. And I said, look, give me an hour interview with you and your wife. Tell me what you want. What's your wish list? How many bedrooms? What you want the kitchen to do, the pool, the kids' rooms, theater. You tell me what you want. Just give me an hour. Then give me 30 days. I'm not going to charge you a dime. See the other guy first. Let them do their presentation. Let me be the last guy in. If you don't like what I've designed, you guys don't owe me a dime. But if you do you give me the job and I want it. So they like what I designed. I ended up building the house and uh, the rest is kind of history because in the tech time, you know, AV technology, home improvement, uh, materials, plasma televisions, home control, were all just kind of coming along. Yeah. So lucky for me, that home I did, they let me put in the best of everything. Yeah. So at that time, there weren't too many guys that had built things at that level with all that technology. So I kind of went from here to here in one project. What, what do you think gives you that ability to like see a house, a project, 
and know how it's going to look like just you, it's almost like, you know, when you see a, a fine woman and, and you, you, it's almost like you could see her naked. So, so you see like a piece of land or a, or a beat up house Absolutely. and you see what that could become. Like, where do you get that imagination from? Well, I mean, as a kid, I used to draw a lot. Yeah. So I think, you know, um, I kind of consider myself now more of an artist than an architect. Uh, but there's a lot of parallels. Um, you know, my, my mantra is always I feel like in architecture, you're a little bit handcuffed as an artist you can really kind of break molds and then you have to engineer up to what you've designed. So, you know, I break a lot of design rules when I design, but yeah. fortunately a lot of people like them. Yeah. Cause it was interesting. We're going through the river when we're in the river rafting, oh, right? Yeah. And then you just like out of nowhere, you just stare at a piece of rock and some mm -hmm. trees and mm -hmm. you start you just, you just mm -hmm. say, I could, I could copy that into a house, something like that. And, and, yeah. and it caught my attention. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. I mean, there's, I, th I think uh, there's always a piece of your brain that's very creative, you know, and a lot of people maybe don't maximize that. I think everybody out there has a creative spirit, um, an imagination. You know, as a kid, you lay in bed at night and dream. You know, I think if you take that with you as an adult and apply that to whatever you want to do, home building, art, music, yeah. if you want to be a painter, there's always creative different ways to do things that make them your own. So I think a lot of people, if they look inside themselves, they really grab that imagination, something that really is part of their core and they can express that, they know how to express it. It's very powerful, man. You know what I think is one of your biggest advantages is that you do everything. Like you kind of, mm -hmm. um, like you, you design the house, yeah. you, you have your contractor's license, you have the funds. So I feel you could move quicker than all the other contractors. So if you have an idea, yeah. you go right at it and other people can't move that fast. Is that true in some water? Well, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's kind of two things. So we're developers, right? Yeah. So we buy, build for ourselves and sell, hopefully for a profit. And uh, about 25% uh, of my businesses, I, be I build for end users or clients. So, you know, you, you, when you build for a client, you're kind of building their vision. When you're building for development, they're building my vision. So yeah, that moves a lot quicker. Yeah. Do, do you think all your projects that you do are for specific buyers? Because those homes that you build are not the most affordable ones. Well, you know, obviously they're for, they're for people that have money, right? But I, I, I try to be very cautious as not to really, you know, is it for a single bachelor? Is it just for a family? Is it just for a family with kids? I really try to make them exciting and, and great, but uh, make sure they appeal to everybody. Yeah. Because, you know, like when like my my mentor in my space is investing in multi-units right so in the multi-units uh if you know that game i remember you told me like oh that's not my game something right. like that right and and uh, and i respect that because you you're just saying it's not your game and for me like developments are, are not my game right so other people say no that's that's too uh that's too risky the property yeah. values might dip in the middle of the of the construction yeah but they don't they also don't understand that game Right. But you, you've obviously uh, demonstrated that you could make a lot of profit doing those big yeah. developments. So well, I mean, there's just there's just some rules. You know, there's there's rules to the game to kind of protect you and make sure you have longevity I, and you I, don't get wiped. I out. remember one of your rules is is when you get a big when you get a project, you kind of hold hold to it for a while, right? You don't just like flip it. You hold on to it for a year or two or something like that. Well, no, it depends. I mean, you, you always, everything's always for sale, right? Yeah. You always want to sell it. So everything yeah. has a price. That's right. That's right. So what, what but about, you want to make sure that you have enough hay in the barn yeah. or contingency backup money that if you do have to sit on it for a year, it's not going to wipe you out. Yeah. And there's just kind of rules of the game, how you pencil it, how you do your pro forma, how you figure out your yield, your carry costs, you know, like that home that you showed us. It was just so like that kind of is the one that made me kind of depressed because because then because then was you don't have to be depressed. You can come over anytime because because then because then was like like I was so excited about moving in here. Mm -hmm. And then when we left that house, Seal was kind of like like sad that we were leaving that house mm -hmm. and we're coming to this house. So you kind of messed it up for 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 us for for that night. Oh, I'm so but, sorry. But but that house. Like, how do you. Well, you, you kind of mentioned it, but that house, when you go in there, mm -hmm. it's almost like paradise. Like you don't want to leave that house. You yeah. could work for like, I, I would just work from there. Yeah. And, and 
Is that a bachelor house? Because it, it kind of like, like if I was single back, if I was single, anybody yeah. that's single, they'll have that house full of like <laughs> 20 hot women. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, it's one of the things I do when I design is I try to make everywhere you look in the house kind of an event, right? It all has to make sense. It has an aesthetic. It means something. Anywhere you turn in something I build better excite you, whether you're a hot woman or just a hardworking guy, yeah. it's, you know, it should appeal to everybody across the board. So that's just one of my design rules. Yeah. Like if you stand in the middle, you could see everything. You could see like, that's right. Like it, it, it's just so it's like magical. Like I don't think people, they have to see it to believe it. <laughs> well, maybe we'll bring a, vid a couple videos to Driven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Re really uh, excited about that. And then there's another, um, just really quick, maybe, maybe the last thing, do you have to go? No. Oh, okay, cool. So you, you, this huge home that had a, had a helicopter and it was just like a beautiful home. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we could mention the name. We don't have to, but you, yeah. you, were, you were part of the person. You, you were like the person that designed that thing? Yeah. I drew every square inch of that house. Wow. I did the acquisition, all the due diligence on the purchase. and you, yeah. you know, like three years ago when I lived in the Shoreham Towers? You know mm -hmm. the Shoreham Towers? I don't. It's, it's a high rise on Sunset Plaza, like, the, okay. like an older high rise that's right there on top of it. But I used to live there. I remember when I moved there, I, I had a $5,000 rent for a one bedroom with a nice view. And that's when I started liking the views because it, 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 it motivated me to do more, want more and, and just aim higher. Right. And then Italia was born. So we moved to a, another unit in there that had two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we moved, I used to watch that video of that house with the helicopter. Yeah. And I used to play it over and over and over. So my, my whole morning routine was watching that video for like an hour. Yeah, and I was and I was watching that video, and it's funny that it's just weird that four years later I'm sitting here with the person that <laughs> created that house. As a matter of fact, as I scroll through some of my favorites, I'm going to show you my rendering of that house, and they even had the helicopter. Wow. That's before I even drew the architectural plans. I had it in my head. Yeah. So we actually drew that, and, <laughs> and that's it. Nothing much changed from that. <laughs> that house is amazing. Wow. Yeah. So now, now are, are you like, we don't, we don't have to put this up, but are you, are you allowed to, to talk about the house or is, or is, or is this kind of private? Yeah. I mean that particular house I private labeled, uh, for another developer. Yeah. So we do that too. You know, a lot of developers will come to us and they say, Hey, we want to put our brand on, on this house, but we want you to design it and build yeah. it. So we, we do that too. And that just happens to be one of those homes. Where does, where do you get the idea of, or the sellers that you're going to sell it for like 200, I think it was 250 million. Yeah. I mean, I can't comment on the sales price. It, it, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, um, it's, I mean, for a unique buyer, but the, all, all your homes, I notice that they have your style. Yeah. It, I mean, it, there's, I always kind of carry a couple of trademark, uh, pieces of the, you know, cause it's, Again, it's kind of like art. So if you take a beautiful painting that maybe you painted and there's one aspect of it that you just love, I always take those aspects, kind of put them into my new builds. So there's always sort of a, sig a signature in the houses that I build. People know that it's me. Do you ever build houses without pools? No. No? <laughs> and <laughs> and, and um... Even if I built a house in Alaska, I would build a pool. Yeah. yeah. The polar bears could come enjoy it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, a few personal questions. Like, what does Roman do for fun? Oh my God. Uh, live life, man. I'm a musician, as you know, so I do that and I enjoy that. Uh, I love to go boating. I love to travel. Uh, I have a great gal and we travel all over the world. So yeah, that's about it, man. Just try and enjoy my time here. You, you know, your boat was probably one of my favorite days of my life. <laughs> like that. Oh, <laughs> I, thank I, you. I, I, didn't, I didn't know it was that cool. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, that's where I find my peace, man, is out there in, in, in the ocean. Yeah. You even have some dolphins come by and say hi to you. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. When you're going that fast, like on that boat, <clears throat> yeah. you don't think if like you let go, you could fly off? No. Nah. No? I still have bruises from that boat ride. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, but it's fun. And, and also, Roman, like <clears throat> nowadays, like where you are today, do you still, do you do any self, any type of self-improvement or things that you learn or is it oh, kind God. of visual no i mean listen i think you if you're any kind of an entrepreneur or a business person i think you learn every day you know if somebody thinks they know it all that's a very scary place like there's nobody in this world that knows everything about what they do yeah but i think if you uh you know if you're willing to admit that 
even at my age and all the stuff that I've done, I still learn new things every day and you have to be open to that. Yeah. You know, but again, I, I run a big collective too. You know, I don't run my company with an iron fist. I have a lot of young talent. I hire guys right out of college, guys and girls that are wonderful architects and designers. And, you know, when we go into a project, we all sit around a big conference table and everybody kind of designs and gets their pieces in. So it's, it's really a collective. Yeah. So we'll talk about the financing and leveraging uh, yeah. at Driven. But does anybody have any questions for Roman before we let him go? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's just smart or just kind of paying attention to your mistakes. You know, I think uh, being smart and having experience, I think uh, having experience is more important than being smart. You just have to be smart enough to recognize your mistakes, fix them and do better. Right. I think that makes you more wise. Right. Than smart. So in, in my experience, experience is uh, is priceless. Did you ever make Did you ever make a big mistake where you were kind of it was going to be the end of your career? And absolutely, yeah, uh, several times. We just won't talk about that here on uh, television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know it's funny because because when we left your house, mm -hmm. Sil was Sil, Sil was um, like Sil, Sil. Yeah. Remember when we left the house, Sylvia? Mm -hmm. When we left the house, Roman's house, we were walking out, and and then Sil was like 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 saying like like, damn, Roman's like a good looking guy. <laughs> like, 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 like leaving, like, that, leaving, I think leaving. that was my brother. Yeah, that was my younger brother. No, no, but, 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 but just, just like, like the, the whole leaving the house, like, still was just like, he's so smart. And, and, and it, it just, it, nah. it just, it just, it was all the things. house, man. It was all the house. I was, and then know. that, and then that room that, um, you know, when, you, when it closes and you keep all the, all the stuff that are kind of like valuables. Oh, right. In the closet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that was, that, that was nice. Yeah. Well, one, one question for Roman. We could just answer this question and we could. What separates you from your, com from your competitors? And I'll add to um, that, Roman, because I know you have records in, in like a lot of places here of the highest sales. Prices. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there's a lot of good builders out there, but I think what separates us uh, from our competitors is there's not a lot of people that actually do the architecture and the build and the interior design and the swimming pool and landscape, everything with one entity or one group. Yeah. So there's very, very few uh, people out there that are in my game that actually do everything. There's usually a, you know, there's a, a developer piece, there's an architect, there's a builder, there's subcontractors. So it's, it's a lot harder to make that jive. And I think that's what separates us a little bit you know yeah but i'm not taking away uh there, there's some great builders and, and people in this town that do what i do for sure but you're the best no well we like to think so uh, i have I have a good uh, uh something that that personal question what keeps you so so like i don't want to use the word humble but mm -hmm. um i don't know if you like that word but you're you're really you're really sincere and simple. Like you, it's almost like you don't like people telling you that you're a badass. Well, no, I mean, it's kind of embarrassing. I mean, listen, I come from a humble background. You know, my, I was raised by a single mother. I didn't even meet my dad uh, until I was almost 14 years old. You know, I've slept on my share of friends' couches and dropped out of college. So I think you just, you just have to remember where you come from. You know, yeah. I don't care how successful you are. Nobody is better than the next guy, you know. These guys that are doing the tile work in your pool, these guys have been with me 20 years. They're like my family. You yeah. know? And, and I think if you treat everybody equal, in my opinion, everybody is equal. Yeah. And you caught me off guard like when you showed up from behind. So you kind of <laughs> threw me off and then still was, so I'm, I'm a little still thrown off. But, but uh, one thing that I want to say about Roman is uh, now that I'm kind of getting myself back together, a uh, Roman, <laughs> like, like Roman, when- Don't when embarrass we, me when, now. When Don't. We, no, uh, but when, when we got our, no more embarrassing, but when we came to the, to the house, remember there was, there were so many things that were wrong and that we wanted to fix. And it's looking good by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks to you. That, that's where I'm going. Oh. So, so me and Sale were, were thinking like, what are we going to do? And then I told Sale, well, let's call Roman. And then you showed up like somebody like you with a busy agenda, you don't have to do this. Like, and, and it's also, it also shows that you just showed up out of nowhere here to see the progress. 
So I really appreciate that. But yeah. when you came over, you just dropped everything, came down, and you were like, okay, I got the guy for the lights, I got the guy for the kitchen, I got the guy for the tile, I got the, the guy mm. for, the, for the pool. I got. How so are they you, all working out, by the way? Very good, very good. Okay, good. That's very good. good. To hear. So you okay. connected us with every person for every department of the house. Right. And, and, and not only that, like I had a guy mm. that was charging me four, uh, four times for the pool. And, and, and because I don't know the reason for that, but you came here and you gave me your price. Which well, the is, reason is because I build a lot of things, right? Yeah. So I get very good prices from my subs and my, what I pay is what you're paying there. So I'm not making a dime on that. So, yeah. So that, that's one of the things that I want to say. It better be about, a good price. <laughs> that, that's one of the things I want to say about Roman. Like, like he's, he's so always willing to help like a great friend. And, and it's sometimes like in life you meet your greatest friends, uh, in such a short time and then sometimes you have friends for for a long time that mm -hmm. end up being not so good friends and just people like beautiful people just come into your life mm -hmm. so like like one of the, is one of the reasons that you think as to why you've been so successful in business because you know we all have different things that are going on all the time nobody's i'm sure your life is not perfect like my life is not perfect and i have a lot of things going on but oh no yeah, I mean, listen, everybody has challenges, but in the end, it's, you know, my philosophy is I don't care what you do, you got to love what you do. And I love what I do. That's why I'm coming by to check. I ate dinner, I came by to see how the guys are doing, yeah. see how your place is, because I actually enjoy it. You know, the way I look at it, I haven't worked a day in my life since my early 20s. You know, I'd rather be at work than on vacation because I enjoy it. I'm not saying it's easy. And a lot of times, hey, man, the days suck. I had a horrible day or I had to deal with a, a client that's out of his mind or somebody owes me money. It's just, you know, business is business. I don't care what you do. If you, if you have a food truck, you know, sometimes your orders are late or the food got delivered and it's bad yeah. or you had a customer that was a jerk. But the next day when you wake up, you got to love that food truck or do something yeah, else, yeah. right? If you don't love driving that food truck and cooking to, to your the heart's content, then don't do it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just one of those people that loves what I do. And yeah. I think you do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the day you, I saw you at the elevator and you were like screaming and remember? Yeah. Well, you know, everybody <laughs> has a bad morning. <laughs> yeah. But do you think <laughs> you being such, you being like uh, humble and, uh, and just being like, like, like the way you are and always focusing on helping people, you think that's why you keep getting more and more successful in business? I don't know. I mean, I think that's everybody owes everybody, you know, respect and yeah. kindness. And that's just the way I roll. Because you know? all your guys, like all the guys you refer to us, yeah. they they see you as like uh, somebody very, very, very close to them. Like they're like, like Roman. Oh, you know, Roman. Yeah, Roman's like, like <laughs> they just think really highly of you. So they're, they're always like, uh, like praising you, like every single well, person. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I think it all just comes back to you know, whoever works in your company, I'm sure you guys do the same. You know, you're, you're still a boss figure, you're still yeah. an owner and you expect certain things, but on the other side of the coin, you got to treat everybody with respect. And, and you got to realize that all these people that are out there in, in your company, in your mix, make you who you are. Yeah. So you got to be the best you can to make them great. Right. Yeah. So and I'm, I'm hoping everybody here that, that I've sent here has been great and great for you. Yeah, well, I think they've been amazing, and I and I think also yeah. you give a lot of people, uh, a lot of people that are contractors, not mm -hmm. only contractors but people that they they see somebody like you, and you started doing pools, and now yeah. you went all the way to building these amazing homes. So it, it's right. it's just proof of what you could do if you don't believe in limits. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, listen, it's there. I I know a lot of very successful people. I mean, the one thing that that I've got to. Uh, enjoy from being in this business is that I get to work for a lot of very successful people. Yeah. So, uh, you learn, you pay attention to kind of people's traits and what they do. And I got to tell you, a lot of successful people are horrible people inside. So you take that and leave that over here. But a lot of people are magnificent. They have magnificent life lessons. So yeah, it's just what you want to do with your life. You yeah. know, you know, one thing my dad always told me, he said, look, you know, if you've set a bar, and, and you want to make $10,000 a month, and that's your goal, you'll probably make eight or nine grand a month. That's probably what you do. If you want to set a bar at 20 grand a month, you may get close, 15, 16 grand a month. You set a bar at a million dollars a month, 
you may get close. Eight, nine hundred grand a month, you could, because you make 20 million a year. But if, if you're looking at this bar and that's your target, and you have a plan to get yourself pretty close to that, you're gonna be in good shape. But I think a lot of people get weighed down. You know, it's not education, it's not money, it's not having rich parents. I think it comes from within yourself. If you set yourself a bar, you gotta have a plan how to get there. And that's one thing my dad always taught, yeah. taught me. So, uh, you know, I just kept raising the bar and seeing if I could get there. Without a plan, you can't make a million a month, right? Absolutely not. You're just winging it. Well, you're if, not if, winging if, it, but it, it, as you know, if you don't have yeah. a set plan how you have to get to your goals, you're probably not gonna get there. You yeah. Know, you may trip into a 7-Eleven and buy a lottery ticket, but besides that, <clears throat> if you don't have a good plan, and I don't think you're gonna get too far. So for example, like for plan, like a plan for you is like how many homes am I gonna do this year? Uh, how many? Yeah, absolutely. You gotta have plans, the money lined up, the exit strategy, the A to Z, man. You gotta have it figured out and, and go for it. I can't even imagine your plan for 2021. I don't know, we'll talk, I'll, we'll, I'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it at Driven. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. It's a big hotel in Florida. Oh, wow. Roman, what is your minimum wage type and price of job you would personally design? Answer whichever one you like better. Do you feel as if Southern California is congested with developers? If so, what new areas are you focusing on? Well, and, that's a good one. Roman, is there a specific area you prefer to build? Question mark. Um, you know, I think all parts of the world have, uh, you know, different challenges. So it's kind of cool. I mean, just this morning at 8 a.m., it was 7 p.m. in Dubai. And my whole office was up early. We're on an 8, uh, 8 a.m. conference call because it was 7 p.m. there. And we're doing two big houses in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. So we're doing that for a, a client that just happened to see my 521 North Cannon uh, you guys can check this out, out on YouTube, 521 North Cannon Drive in Beverly Hills. And these guys just happened to see it on a television yeah. show. And they, they, uh, they looked me up. They got a hold of our office and they set up a big conference call. <clears throat> and we ended up landing two jobs. Yeah. So we designed in New York, Florida, the Hamptons, Montana, Mexico, Cabo, uh, you know, Paris, London, all over the world. So... For me, I don't care. If you came to me and you said, hey, I live in Iowa and I want the sickest dairy farm that anybody's ever seen in their life, I would do it. Do you have, <laughs> do you have like a limit on or an amount that you just won't go? Like, if, like let's say if it's a really small, tiny house, it doesn't make sense for you. I'm sure for me, you, you'll build me like a small house, but, but like, like if people... I mean, it all, it all kind of goes to the client. You know, yeah. not, not too long ago was 2008, you know, and everybody was looking at each other and... I couldn't sell a mailbox, you know? I couldn't sell a chicken coop. Did you so, struggle in 2008 a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Thank God I, I wasn't leveraged in 2008. So, you know, I had a lot of friends that got hurt bad. We didn't. Thank God uh, we had some end user projects that, that got us through. But that was a very sobering moment. So to answer your question, you know, somebody came to me and said, hey, I want to build a 4,000 square foot house in Garden Grove. I'd probably do it. Yeah. Just remembering that, you know, in 2008, that happened quick. I mean, it, it was like that. In 20 days, the world came to an end, right? So I think if you can never be too cocky if you have an opportunity, unless it's going to dilute your performance, right? Yeah. You can't get overwhelmed. But if, if you have something that you can make money on and you can deal with it and do it, do it. Yeah. Because you don't know when, when the world's going to end. Look at this COVID stuff. Yeah. This happened in 10 minutes. In February, I was having the time of my life in Punta Mita, Mexico, golfing, uh, and by March, it was over. How did you take the whole COVID thing? Did it did it kind of, did you get scared like one day or one week where you kind of like thinking, is this the end? Or you know, when they first shut uh, when they first shut everything down, we were living together in a high rise mm -hmm. on Santa Monica Boulevard, and in two days, there was not one car during in rush hour. Yeah, and to me, that was alarming. You know, I thought it would all work out. You know, I yeah. got caught up on Netflix and whatnot, but yeah, it was a little nerve wracking. Yeah, <laughs> Cra crazy. Uh, questions? Um, I think that's it. If anybody has one, you know, one last shot, what do you want to ask him, man? <laughs> and you, you know something that I learned from you that has impacted my life? 
and and I've been doing it because I'm I'm a very I'm very I'm a very humble guy. How to make a good margarita? Besides oh, that, okay. that's a good one. But <laughs> but but like you taught me, or or not not taught me, but you remind me that to always be always have a good heart, always uh, always remain humble enough to yeah. learn from others and always always do what's right and, and help people yeah. and then the good things are going to come because because and don't let your ego take over because you know some people some younger younger people they're doing really good and then yeah. they let their ego take over and then they think they're the greatest thing on earth right and then when i when i met you and i just started <clears throat> knowing more about you and the things you do the life you have like it just remind it just reminds me and kind of cements me to like hey albert just remember your purpose. Like, let's help as many people in the world that, that we can. And let's do the right thing. And then th good things are going to happen to our daughters, to our people, to people yeah. that work for the company and things like that. So you always, yeah. I always, when I, it's seri this is serious. So I, I wake up and I'm like, like, how's Roman doing? What would Roman do? And, and it, it keeps me, it keeps me grounded and, and, right. and, and well, that's good. going. Yeah, yeah. But remember, you know, some people totally suck. And those people, you just got to run over. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Last question. Um, well, yeah, there's two more. Who is who is the current person you're studying or mentor if you can share? I I don't understand. Oh, like, are you currently studying? Is there somebody that you're studying to, to a mentor for what you do? But I don't. I, I think he's the mentor. Oh no! I mean, listen. I I look at other people's work all the time. You know, like a commercial architects. You know, older architects. Kind of. You know, I, I like the guy that used to uh, design in this neighborhood. You know, you guys are in a very very famous neighborhood. Yeah. So the uh, you know there, there's a lot of great architects that came out of those times. So, you know, great architecture isn't really, you know, nobody really creates it. They kind of borrow little pieces of what's existing. So. Well, yeah, I'm what, always looking what, kind of what, Any it, one person, but I don't know. What What do you think between uh, Truesdale Estates and Bird, oh. the Bird Streets? Like, what, how do you compare those two? What, what do you, which one do you like better? Uh, they both have their own flair. Yeah. You know, they're both historic. They're both cool. They what, both have their own rules. What's What's like one thing that one has that the other one doesn't? That you, uh, well, Truesdale has the most expensive house in, that ever was built in the city of Beverly Hills. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that'll still be my favorite. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of good things in, in, in the Bird Streets too. So I mean, they're both fantastic. Yeah, because the Bird Streets is, is uh, West Hollywood, right? Yeah. And, and this is Beverly Hills. Right. We had one more question? Mm -hmm. Good? It's kind of personal. Um, oh, yeah. Whoa. How much did you make on your first project for 30 plus mil? What percentage of the construction cost did you charge? Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to answer. Boy, so I think that the deal that I cut on that was some sort of a monthly fee for management. And then the owner uh, paid all the direct costs. And then I did own a company at the time. So they subbed some work to us too. But the short answer is I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah, well, but, but it was pretty damn good. I remember that. Yeah. Well, awesome. I think we got a lot of super gold nuggets from this and mm -hmm. and uh really appreciate you man yeah no problem dude appreciate always good to see you yeah <laughs> thank you all right <laughs> yeah get back in the hot seat there man <laughs> we we, we let, let's just close it for, for five minutes yeah and and then uh just give us five minutes don't don't leave yet don't leave it we'll close it out in five minutes i'm not verified right, cool. so i don't belong in this conversation With the proof? i'll go out front and check on my car <laughs> okay. Yeah, guys. So if you guys have any like one last question, I know uh, we were talking about the the verification on Instagram and Facebook, but I guess I'll I'll come up with the uh, the rest of that lesson at Driven. Yeah. And uh, if you guys just want to bring this up, if you guys are interested in CEO tickets, we have two available uh, today. We called everybody from the CEO ticket from the, all the CEO ticket holders. We have people coming from. Europe, from South America, from all over the United States. And to, and we just want to make sure that those seats are not going to be like missed out or, or lost. So two people can't make it. And those two CEO tickets are available. So if you want those CEO tickets, uh, this is the first uh, place that I'm mentioning that. Make sure you contact Steph. She's right there, Steph Tobar. Send her a message. Send me a DM. 
these will not last. So I think we have, I, I mean, the, they're going to, they're going to be gone in the next 30 minutes. So if you're interested, you're serious, just contact Steph, send her a message, send me a DM and we'll connect you with those two CEO tickets. Remember the CEO ticket, you're going to be in a private mastermind with myself, Sil, Bobby Castro. We got a uh, Brad Lee. We're going to have Roman Roman. We're going to have Rob Luna who you'll meet. Rob Luna, he's an, he's a private equity guy. He shows you how to build your company to the highest valuation possible. He's amazing. Super smart people. And you want to be in this private mastermind. We're going to go uh, tour my headquarters, my corporate offices. And then we're going to go to this private mastermind for three hours. Then we're going to top it off with dinner. And this is Friday. So this is Friday CEO session day. And this is only for CEO ticket holders. Stop eating that. And... Saturday is going to be the driven event that's for everybody. So the one day event, driven event, if you have a super VIP ticket, VIP ticket, you're going to be at the driven event. That's the normal event. But CEO, man, it's 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 a it's cheap. It's a cheap ticket. You're to get to be around these people, it's worth it. So we only have two. Take action and uh we have room for one more question if somebody has it. If not, uh let's end this questions so far so we're good uh reach out to steph so yeah guys because of the verification because of putting myself in ten thousand, where i paid 20 grand a month okay and and Are being still a, paying be, be, yeah we're still paying it uh <laughs> we haven't officially left <laughs> yeah so because of that because of the credibility because of the cars because of just showing success remember if when Mo came to my office the first time, he was driving a minivan. Was Na he really? Yeah, he was driving a minivan for I the first co-session. <laughs> a minivan. <laughs> hey, he, it's all about improving and learning he was making, and applying. And he was making 60 grand a month. With 60 grand a month, you should have something better than a minivan. Right. But we strategized and I told him, Mo, like, how are you going to get people to believe you? <laughs> like, if you tell me you make 60 grand a month, I'll be like, dude, you're crazy. <laughs> like, you don't make 60 grand a month. You drive a minivan. <laughs> yes, so, kids, okay. so so I, I get it but you could have a minivan and a, another car so i told mo like look let's work on your marketing let's let's make let's make you look more successful it's because people now nowadays they look for that social so proof. so you start doing that social proof and and we put ourselves in the circle of influence ten thousand, and then we meet roman now roman is one of my best buds uh, I'm on the boat with him. We're going to be on the boat again Saturday to to film uh, something for my intro video. And then he just check, comes in and checks in on us. Like, how are you doing, Albert and Syl? Mm -hmm. And he totally caught me off guard, by the way. Cause, and then there was like a lot of noise. But cool friend. That's life. Man, cool friend. <laughs> a he lot hooked, of noise he, all the he time. hooked us up with everything for this house. So super, super uh, excited. And, and that's what being verified is going to get you uh, by getting all these gadgets. that You might be like, I don't need to get a car like that. Well, guess what? People are going to pay more attention to you. And and Mo going from a minivan to a half a million dollar Lamborghini, dude. And he still has a Ferrari. So, and now he's making $200,000 a month. I, I, excuse me, $207,000 a month. Because I know you're going to correct me. I think so, yeah. Two, 207000 I think it's more. And, I, like it's, you can get and, and, I mean, he'll, <laughs> he'll be at 300000 next month, but... This guy is crazy, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hear a little bit about Mo um, in this. Uh, that was Romans in uh, Driven. He's gonna be also at the CEO session now. One quick thing, like people ask me all the time, do you have to get verified on Facebook before you get verified on Instagram? No, you don't. I got verified first on Instagram, and then I got verified on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you don't have to do that. Remember, you do have to pay three thousand dollars for Instagram. Then you have to pay another three thousand dollars for Facebook. You pay once you get verified. So I'm going to go into all these details. If, for, for anybody that wants me to help them, I'll connect you with my contacts. And, uh, and we'll go from there. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a really good, um, it's very, very interesting, informative uh, driven couples today, right? I was thinking when he said something. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's Albert. What is it? What was it? Something that he said that you do all the time. It's like crazy. Uh track no. measuring having the no. game plan no being uh, nice to people being humble we're always nice to people but you don't always get that back shit what was it 
I don't know. I'll well, think try about and it. remember. No, remember because yeah. now, now I'm numb and suspense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, you you see you see how raw this is. Like like I was I was joking around with 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 Roman when I told him that. But seriously, like when we walked out of that house, Syl was was going like she 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 looked like she fell in love with Roman because of the house was so beautiful. It and, is and, perfect. And and, and, and then perfect. he's and then he's really smart. It takes a lot to impress me. Like, I'm sure everybody that works at the company knows. Like, like it Steph, takes you a lot. you walk in there like think about the ugliest dude you've seen. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying anything not to do with Roman, but let's just let's just picture. Uh, give me a name. <laughs> just give me a name. <laughs> okay, Juan. So so think about Juan. <laughs> See, Juan Juan has a house like that, right? And you walk in there with Freddie. You you literally like leave Freddie and and you start following Juan because the house is just like that. Yeah. It was beautiful. I'm serious. And, and like, it's, I was blown like, away. Like, think about it. When when you're driving a nice exotic, how oh, the girls get, they're like, they're like. Pues la resbalosa, sí. Yeah. So so imagine this house. This house was just like that. So I was just kidding, though. But but yeah, like when you walk out of that house, you're like, I don't want to leave that house. What? I can't think of what it was, and it's going to bug me all night. Th think about it. It was, it was, I think it was 42 million or 45 million, something like Stunning. that. Stunning. Has a Stunning. tennis court and three Stunning. stories. and, and Honestly, and nice. me personally, that's probably just me now. I don't like huge houses because I'm obsessed with my kids and I love them so much. And like, it just makes me feel weird when I can't see them or yeah. like hear them. Like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just love them so much that I don't, I want to make sure they're always okay. And I just feel like stairs. It's not that they make me nervous. I'm not scared of anything. It's just being without my kids is probably the only thing or them getting yeah, yeah. hurt, things like that. So I would, I like flat, um, you know, one story homes, you know, big, but like theaters, things like that. Yeah. But I'm not, not, not but like guys, a huge house. I never imagined being in this $10 million home. So like in a year from now, we might be thinking $40 million home and, and, and Roman definitely is going to design it. Yeah. Cause he, I'm he help that, that, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> He, he's, he's, he's the best in that. But I think what you see is what you get from us, guys. Yeah. So we don't edit the driven couples. We don't edit anything. Like, we're, we just like to be real. I like I like for you to see me kind of, like, I got distracted. So I, I kind of, I kind of my A game went to, like, a C game when Roman showed up from the back. From, from the back. But I want you to see that. I don't want you to see edited perfection because I'm not perfect all the time. And neither is Hill. So, like, when things like that happen, what we say we don't retract and we don't clean it up. We don't look for perfection. We look to be what real how we are. And hey, we have a lot of accomplishments. We're living a good life. We have a lot of money in the bank. How hard is it to keep this good life? We don't stop. Like, like today, like the whole day is nonstop. Every day is nonstop. But like Roman said, something very important. You enjoy the journey, the process. Yeah. Like every day, like I look forward to waking up in the morning, working out and going from back to back to back to back to back uh -oh. to back to back to back to back thing. So if it got disconnected, it'll maybe connect again. So we, we always look every day. I look forward to, again, a battle, a battle, a battle, a battle. So um, I have something to close it out with still, but I want you to add something to it. It's just going to take everything you have. And it's important to understand that you yourself, you have to be better. You have to get better. You have to work faster. You have to get smarter. You have to self-improve. You have to be inspired. You have to hang out with people that are the same. Because whoever you hang out with, whoever you listen to, it, it's going to have a huge impact on your life, right? And being uber, super, super, super successful, you don't get there by being around people that aren't penny pinchers, people that think Steph, you owe them something, people that spot. complain yeah, about yeah, everything, yeah. people that want everything for free, that are entitled. At the end of the day, it's like what I always Pretty tell close. Albert. Money's important. It's not more important than relationships are burning bridges. But how do you get to a very, very, very successful place? By being around people that are the dreamers, the believers, the people that just make things happen and they do it with a smile on their face and they're happy doing what they do. You know, it's like you and I, I, I love what we do. I'm not going to lie and tell you guys that it's always perfect and that I don't get a little stressed out sometimes, but I just keep going so and, and I just make things happen and I go and I go and I go and push, I go push back, so until I'm done. That's it. And, and I can work all day, every day. I'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. And I feel like, People lack of that because ah, there's always tomorrow. Ah, there's always tomorrow. It's it's it's, and you can tell by the little things in people. In my personal opinion, because I'm 
I observe everything. Yeah. Like, I can tell that you're super trucha. Like, there's just things I'm always... Did you call himself a trucha? No, he's always... Oh. It's como trucho. Like, I don't know how to say it in English. Like, yeah. sharp. Like, he's always paying attention. Because he's Mexican. He's so, not a trucha. <laughs> so, anyway. And, and life is always going to throw battles at you. Literally. You know, Friday, I was so excited with our nanny. And she pretty much resigned because of some personal issues. And then she's like, let me come back on Tuesday after the holiday weekend. And I get it. Okay, you had an issue. But, like, you don't text me that and then tell me have a good day. Like, to me, that was just, like, mind-blowing. And then I feel so bad. You know, I'm like, no, I really like her. But then again, it's like, it's so, it's kind of like a slap in the face to do that to somebody. And, of course, it's right before driven, so. We're just going with the flow and making things happen. So. Hey, Tony, is Roman still there? He is outside. J just check check out if he's still there. If, if not, I don't want to rush it. So keep going? Yeah. And That's life is always going to throw unexpected things at you. Always. And you just got to keep going. You got to find solutions. You got to move fast. I was telling Albert, I'm like, it's like... New house, remodeling, picking colors, buying furniture, uh, picking. You guys have no idea. It's like so much. But I know that when Driven is over and we have Driven, I'm just going to be like, ah, oh, okay. And then I'm sure we'll get into 50 other things because that's just how yeah, my life happen, works. Yeah, that's going to happen for sure. Yeah. It just works like that. Okay, perfect. So let me just close it with this really quick. I was, I just wanted to make sure that he was still there. <laughs> See, you guys, real life. Real life. <laughs> So, guys, well, one of the things, and this is good for you, for you like, like Tony, Jesus, and Steph, listen to this. Uh, what, one of, like, if you are anything like me, like Sil, like Steph, and, and you guys too, Jesus and, uh, and Tony, you, you, you guys are, are warriors. But, like, let me just tell you based on my experience and how I feel. Like, every day, every day, I feel like I left a lot of things unfinished. Every day, I feel like there's not enough time. I feel like, fuck, I should have woken up a little bit earlier. Man, I should have kept going longer. And every day is like that. And then, you know, because you know we're doing so much, so many things. And you're like asking me, Albert, do this, 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 and this. And then we're asking Steph, do this, 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 and this. And then you have this, 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 and this. And then we're, I'm telling Tony, this, 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 and this. Jesus, you got to do this, 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 and this. And like, and like guys, like, and then they stay late. Then they come, then they come sometimes later. Then they, like, it's just like crazy circus, right? But one thing that all of you watching this need to realize that I learned and that I know that it's 100% fact facts is every day you get an inch closer so every day is progress 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 so remember when if, if you're going to bed exhausted and, and kind of ex not defeated but exhausted you're going to bed exhausted but you have a good feeling about it that you were really productive yeah that's good you did, you gave it all. Like in other words, just know that you gave it your all. Even if you're tired, uh, you're, you have a headache or, or you felt like you could have done more, just make sure that you gave it your all. And remember, tomorrow is going to be another day to give it your all again. And then you give it your all again. And then you give it your all again. And that's me. Every day I give it my all again. I give it my all again. There's going to be certain things that you're just not going to be able to get to. Yeah. But that's fine. Tomorrow is you add more, you add more, you add more, you add more. And by doing that for 10 years, we are now here. $10 million home. We have a couple Ferraris, have the Rolls Royce. And all these things that are just material things, they're not, they're not worth anything. But to me, what's worth a lot is having friends like Roman. Yeah. Being able so, to attract people like that and keep them as friends. And remember, if you think you, as long as you go to bed feeling like you gave it your all, that's that's all you got to do. Remember, there's going to be things that you didn't get to. But as long as you give it your all, tomorrow's another day to give it your all again. One hundred percent. I couldn't agree more. So thank you, guys. We'll see you next week. Wednesday. That's going to be the last day before Driven Cella. Well, we might skip that one. No, we, <laughs> we're, we're not. Oh, so, okay. guys, we'll see you next Wednesday. We don't skip things. OK, thank you. So you guys get ready for that one. <laughs>